Hi, my name is Deborah Nedlitsky. I am a, a teacher and school leader in Perth, Western Australia. I've been a teacher for more than 20 years now, a teacher of English, literature, art, critical thinking. I've taught in Perth here in my hometown. I've taught in Melbourne for a few years. I taught in London for a few years. And I've been a school leader since my third year of teaching when I was made uh, head of middle school English at uh, an independent school that I was working at then. So I've had since then a number of leadership positions, uh, head of faculty positions, um, and in charge of things like uh, professional learning staff development. I'm now head of teaching and learning at a school here in uh, Perth, Western Australia for uh, 1,700 students, co-educational, uh, about 150 teachers, about 250 staff. And so I take care of teaching, learning, assessment, reporting, staff development, professional learning, uh, all those kinds of things. And uh, I've got a Doctor of Philosophy, I've got a PhD. Uh, I looked at um, school change, professional learning, professional identity. Uh, I'm author of a book called Transformational Professional Learning, Making a Difference in Schools. I edited a book called Flip the System Australia. And so I'm kind of, um, I call myself sometimes a pracademic, someone who is uh, astride the two worlds of practice and uh, research. So academia and um, practical work in schools, even though it's not really practical work, uh, it's, um, it can be very theoretical in itself. So I'm gonna talk here a little bit about what has influenced me in my leadership and how I um, think about leadership myself. So first of all, there's a couple of things sort of underpinning beliefs that anchor me when I'm uh, working in my leadership role. And that is um, to anchor myself in my vision and values and also the vision and values of the school in which I'm working. And obviously it's better if a vision, a school vision, a moral, shared moral purpose, a moral purpose is shared with people within that school community. So part of the work of leadership is actually sharing your own vision for what um, you hope in a kind of general sense, but also making sure that everyone in the school is kind of um, understanding what it is that we together want to work towards and what are the values that underpin all of our behaviours and our decision making and that should be happening uh, at all levels of the school for students, for teachers, for leaders of different um, in different positions across a school. The other underpinning belief for me is really uh, trusting in the capacity of everyone within the school community, especially the teachers. So trusting and supporting teachers, um, believing that they are really fantastic at their jobs and they absolutely have the capacity to be amazing, to improve, um, to continuously do better um, and to work together and, and having that as a really core belief. Um, certainly not starting from a deficit model of wanting to fix or change or thinking that people aren't up to something, but really just starting with that trust in the belief in the capacity of other people. So those are some things that underpin the work that I do in school leadership. Now, if I think about how I then enact school leadership, like what are the sorts of frameworks that lead to action, there's a few things there for me. One is that um, school leaders are constantly having to navigate tensions. So things like switching between what some people might call the, the dance floor view, um, you know, on the ground with the troops, what's the reality of this really like, and the balcony view of the vision, um, the long-term plan, and also having to think really fast and slow at the same time. So being really responsive, being really adaptable, but at the same time being able to think about um, strategically how we are implementing gradual um, positive change. The other thing I think it's really important as a leader is to have a real clarity around the frameworks for decision making. So um, to be really consistent about what is my framework in each situation for how I make a decision and to be really transparent and clear with staff uh, and with students about, well, here is a framework for decision making and here's how we're following that through so that there's consistency, transparency and clarity for everybody. The other thing I think that is really important, certainly in my work, is meaningful collaboration and consultation. So that idea that in schools, leadership's not a title, it's not a position, it's a behaviour, it's an action, and that we collectively, from teachers to administration and facilities and um, all staff, need to be working together towards that goal. And for me, that means consulting, ga gathering feedback and really listening to it. It includes seeking out dissenting voices, so those people who disagree or think something's a really bad idea, and really seeking to understand their perspectives and seeking to understand multiple perspectives so that then we can actually make better decisions for everyone. Um, and really, leadership's about serving others, but in order to do that, 
leaders also need to look after themselves. It's that old adage of fitting your own oxygen mask before you can help others. So leaders, I think, need to be really mindful of their own well-being and finding ways to pause, build in breaks or um, from work or things that are in uh, often ha have to be calendarized, but that are really about um, looking after self so that we can look after others. Thank you. Hi there, my name's Susan Bradbeer and I'm a Deputy Principal at a regional independent school in regional Victoria. I am also a teacher of English and teacher of literature and um, I love uh, taking up this role uh, within my school and I think one of the things that underpins my role as a Deputy Principal and certainly in, in any leadership role that I've had in my career is the importance of relationships of how we work with people and relate to people. Another key part of that is also my own personal values and the values I uphold and how that impacts my vision and my, the way I frame my work, both professionally and personally. Um, I think it gives me great pleasure to see other people in power to be the best they can be and that's something that I really strive for in all that I do, both in my teaching and, my, and the learning that goes on for staff and students and our parents in our broader educational community here. Um, being involved with Women Ed uh, and Women Ed Oz over the last couple of years has been extraordinary. It's been a great journey, a great learning journey to know that so many other women throughout the world have connected together to encourage one another to be the best they can be in education. And it's, it's a really great opportunity right now to celebrate that and draw attention to something that really matters for our future as women who lead in education. Hi, I'm Sharon McCormack and I'm one of the team members from Women Ed Australia. I live in Melbourne and have worked in education for over 30 years. I'm a primary school teacher, so I work, have worked in many schools across Melbourne Metropolitan. For a number of years, I've worked in the middle leadership. I 
love learning and teaching. So I've, I've stayed in middle leadership and I've been fortunate to have many different experiences leading in different areas of the curriculum. So that's meant a lot of my work has been still working with teachers, working in classrooms, working with students, as well as working across the community with parents and families. Developing partnerships with outside of the school to, to bring in expertise in order to improve the learning and teaching programs. At the present moment though, I've taken on a, a new challenge. I, I've embarked on a PhD journey. I was fortunate enough to receive a scholarship at the Conceptual Play Lab at Monash University. It's a research project that is led by Professor Marilyn Fleer and it's to do with STEM education in early childhood. The project has been funded by Australian Research Council and I'll be researching in the area of early childhood and looking at um, the way in which families develop um, STEM concepts through play in their home settings. So if I reflect back on my leadership journey in education, I am aware that, that for women there are many barriers so I think it's really important that in pursuing leadership and leadership roles, that you really do look for the opportunities that are within the school community or even outside the school community. So it's been important that I've built my network, that, I've, that I have um, developed myself, my, professional knowledge and my professional practice and in working with um, teams of teachers right across from prep to year six I've always felt that it's important that teachers are given time in their professional learning in order to further develop themselves in their practice and in their knowledge across the many different areas of the curriculum. So my, a lot of my work has been influenced in ensuring that they do have the provision in order to further develop themselves. So I've developed mentoring programs, coaching programs. I've looked at the professional pro programs right across prep to six, working with teachers and an important aspect of that has been to develop leadership capacity amongst the teachers that I've worked in. Because as a leader, I can't do the work in the teams across large schools. The fact is that you need to build leadership capacity right across the school. Quite often we think hierarchical and we often think of those formal roles but there's of leadership, but there are, we need to build capacity of all our teachers to be leaders in our school. And particularly when we're looking at the provision of learning and teaching and looking at ways in which we can improve our programs and the provision in the classrooms. So it's really important that we are building leadership capacity right across the school. And as a woman leader in education, I have felt that it's been really important to develop the, and support the professional journeys of other teachers and particularly our young teachers that are coming in in order so that they can determine their own professional journey in education. I'm really motivated by the challenges and I've always led by example. So I think the aspect of leadership is, is, is leading by example. So professional growth for me has improving the practice and the knowledge that I have in learning and teaching and in supporting my colleagues in their professional journey is really what has anchored and influenced the work that I've done in schools. So it's been a long journey and, and now I've embarked on a new journey. So thanks very much for listening and um, have a great conference and bye for now.